Great. Let's uh, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. Um, my name is Fletcher Harper with Green Faith, and um, I'd like to welcome everybody to this webinar to talk about the 100 Days Planning Call for Faith Communities. Um, Joelle, do you want to greet everybody? Joelle and I are sort of co co orchestrating this webinar. Hey, I want to make sure the audio is good, so I'm going to use this phone. But um, yeah, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be working together. Uh, I direct the Interfaith Power and Light uh, chapter that engages faith communities in the DC metro area and the state of Maryland in responding to climate change, and it's um, a pleasure to be the local uh, partner in mobilizing communities of faith uh, to participate in the this um, exciting event. I'll hand it back to Fletcher. Great. <clears throat> so uh, a couple of housekeeping things before we jump right in. We're recording <clears throat> the webinar so that we um, can share it with folks who are um, who are not able to be with us live. We had about 80 people join us uh, on the webinar on Monday evening, and we've got another, we've, you know, several hundred people have, have registered. So we're uh, looking forward to sharing the, and after the webinar, what we'll do is we will send out a link to the recording and a copy of the slides and some supporting materials to everybody who's registered. And you should feel free to share that, uh, share that information freely with, with other friends and colleagues. Um, second piece is that we'll be joined in just a minute by Leslie Kagan, who's from, uh, who is with people, the People's Climate Movement, and who was very involved in the organizing of the march in New York um, two years ago. And so Leslie will, Leslie will join us in just a couple of minutes. Um, and the third thing is if you've got questions that you want to pose, there's a Q&A um, chat function, use that. We'll, we, if we don't get to your question right away, it's not that we're not going to answer it or haven't seen it. It's just we may be waiting for the right time to, to get it in. So why don't we, uh, why don't we get started? And... Um, I think the um, the first thing that we'll do is is just give a very quick overview of the people's climate movement. Uh, we all remember the the people's climate march in New York on September 21st of 2014, and and the important role that that played in in uh, um, helping um, increase uh, and build on the good work that that many of us. Uh, and many on this call have been have been working on for years in terms of prioritizing action on climate change. Um, and there's Leslie. Hey, Leslie, how are you? Can you hear us okay? Can you hear us, Leslie? Nope, Leslie is still getting her audio. So just a, a quick piece. Um, out of the People's Climate March in New York um, emerged the People's Climate Movement. And uh, the network of groups involved in the PCM has grown. You see the list of groups from <clears throat> the march in New York in the column on the far left. Uh, last year, um, in 2015, a PCM organized an October 14th Day of Action, and the organizations that were involved in making that happen are listed in the center column. And now on the far right column, um, a, a growing number of groups, including some additional ones that that aren't yet added to the uh, to the column are involved in the, the planning that we're going to be talking about today. So it's, uh, as you can see, one of the things that's really important about the People's Climate Movement is that it's multi-sector. It involves uh, labor groups, environmental groups, environmental justice organizations, grassroots community-based groups, faith communities, indigenous groups, student groups. So it's a, it's a diverse movement, and, uh, and we like it that way. Um, so what I'll do now, Leslie, can you hear us okay? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Hi. So the, the technology is working so well today, I hardly know what to do. We had some technological <laughs> snafus the other night. So now, uh, Leslie, I'm going to pass it over to you, and maybe you can, you know, we've got uh, faith organizers, faith folks on this call. Um, give everybody, if you would, an, an overview of what the, what the PCM is about and, and how PCM thinks about issues and thinks about making an impact. Sure. Um, thanks for having me on call. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, and thanks to all of you 
for taking out some quickly. I hope you all have access to the slides. I'm not going to read them word for word, but basically we have an approach to how we think this work needs to unfold and how we've been trying to, to push it along um, and some sort of basic touchstones uh, that anchor our work. One is that we believe change happens when large numbers of people, massive numbers of people are in action in public arenas, uh, out in the streets, uh, is obviously one, one way that happens, but there are many other ways too. But the point is to put large numbers of people into public motion. Uh, we also believe that our ability to, to uh, deal with the climate crisis, the global climate crisis, um, will happen uh, as we are, that we'll be stronger in our ability to do that work when we are building a broad based movement and one that, that takes leadership from frontline communities from working people, people of color, low-income people, et cetera. Um, we uh, believe also that we need to think about building our movement through the, our mass um, efforts and our collective action, but across constituencies, bringing different constituencies and, um, and communities together, uh, right from the beginning in the planning, the decision-making, and then the execution of those plans uh, in the actions that we do. But we need to do, um, be very conscious about reaching beyond the communities that we're in to, to reach out and, and make those connections. Um, and we also know that this work has to be grounded uh, in local organizing, uh, where we build, we, we're calling them tables, you could call them organizing committees, uh, whatever you want to call them, but the concept is the same, that we build these tables where, again, we're very uh, intentional. Uh, very clear uh, and, and specific about creating leadership um, among our partners that includes the commitment to sharing our resources um, that larger and smaller organizations all have some to control. Uh, all needs ways that we can. Uh, we also know that, that every single, so we talk about building containers for our action, uh, places and campaigns and projects that allow us to, to perhaps highlight different messages um, and use different tactics even sometimes, but they'll share uh, what we call a branding or messaging. Uh, we bit, uh, share uh, a way that we talk about the issues and share again that commitment to being to linking con communities and constituencies. Uh, finally, I'll say here that we are uh, building a big tent, um, but or and <laughs> that means so that we're not uh, just going for the lowest common den denominator, we're going for the highest common denominator. In fact, we're trying to build relationships. Um, and a partnership um, that really is, again, grounded in that commitment to work together uh, and to hash out the issues, the differences, the uh, range of ideas that we have uh, and come to agreement in order to move the work ahead. So those are, I think, are some of the foundational pieces that, that we need to work with. Um, the, other thing I would say, uh, and hopefully again, you have the uh, graphic in front of you, we see all of this as a partnership that involves uh, the local organizing, uh, either through tables or hubs, people, you know, we use all those, that language interchangeably, um, where people come together either based on where they live, or the issue that they work on, or the constituency that they work through or work with. Um, and that these are tied together uh, with our national partners, um, and many of whom serve on the National Steering Committee. So it's a kind of multi-layered uh, approach to the work, but we think um, really does uh, more accurately reflect the reality of people's lives and the complexity of the country that we live in. Uh, one thing to just mention again is that the steering committee, uh, <clears throat> which um, has uh, 26, I think, groups on it now, um, is the entity, the National Steering Committee is the entity 
that has been charged with or mandated to develop the calls to action, the um, hammer out the plans for our campaigns, etc. Um, we always go through a process and are always welcoming input and ideas and feedback from the, the, the many groups, uh, big and small, all around the country. But in the end, when decisions are made uh, in the name of the People's Climate Movement, that is in, that rests in the steering committee. So that's, that's that uh, point uh, in terms of a little bit of how we work. Um, let me also say that, that, that within the steering committee, there are different subcommittees and uh, task groups that, you know, that actually carry out the work. And we have a small staff, which we hope to be developing over time. Um, there are now basically um, what, what I think is summarized in this next slide, three uh, big kind of picture demands that we have. Uh, but I think also these translate to to local with new energy economy and to to get there that we must move away from fossil fuels we must reduce the um, the emissions that are poisoning the planet uh, and move to a new infrastructure we have to build a new energy infrastructure. Two is that core to all this is that in a transition, we have to do this in a way by we, I mean the country uh, has to do this in a way that protects communities, protects workers, protects the people already impacted by the climate crisis. Um, and those workers um, in particular in the fuel industry, in the energy in industry that, that may be in the short term negatively impacted, but we believe in the long term, um, again, with a commitment to a new energy economy, we'll have jobs and we'll have thriving communities. Um, and finally, at um, our concept of a new energy economy rests in a belief that, that when it is done, when we are moving toward that, we are doing it in a way that lifts everybody in this country uh, into, uh, into stronger communities. Um, it will lift poor people out of poverty. Uh, it will protect the rights of indigenous communities, people of color, uh, women, workers, etc., cetera, um, so that the energy economy is, again, grounded in a very deep commitment to economic and racial justice. Um, so that, that's, a, that's kind of the big picture demands that we have, and they are big demands, as you can see. That's um, great, Leslie. Yeah. Thank, thanks a million, and, and as, as folks can imagine, the, the recent election results have um, underscored the importance of this kind of coalition building. And it's one of the things that, that I'm very grateful um, to be part of PCM because it's one of the few places I find where um, people of faith and environmentalists and students and labor activists and social justice activists and Black Lives Matter folks and, and others are, are coming together to understand the intersectionality of these issues and to work together on them. And so um, I think it's a, it's a special opportunity and an important coalition. Um, and I think the, uh, you know, there are four basic goals for uh, PCM's work as we, as we see it now. Um, one is to, to continue um, in whatever ways are politically feasible to get this new administration in Congress to take action on climate. We know that's an uphill battle, but um, we also know that we need to hold the line on, on our demands around that. Um, the issues aren't going away just because there's a, a new administration in, in Washington. Um, we want to mobilize large numbers of people from a broad base of communities into action because, as Leslie said earlier, we believe that that's an important part of what creates social change. Um, we want to create a framework where we're strengthening and building um, and creating opportunities for the development of local and state and other organizing campaigns and movements and capacity. Joelle's going to talk a little bit about that and um, uh, one, you know, her, her vision and, and plans around that in the greater D.C. area. 
And then we want to continue to build these relationships between the, the different sectors and different movements and organizations that we've been talking about. So within the, the context of those broad goals, um, to shift now and to talk uh, specifically about the action piece of the picture, um, there is still active conversation underway given the new context about the details of what this should look like. But essentially, the, the heart of it is that we think that there needs a, there, there's a, a, a planning period during this transition time where there's planning going on around the idea of um, during the first 100 hours and the first 100 days of the new administration, <clears throat> uh, creating opportunities for action nationally, culminating with an important central, with an important action that will have a combination of centralized and decentralized manifestations on the 29th of April. Um, the idea being that we want to um, really work on making the first 100 hours a time when the climate movement, very broadly speaking, shows up in a meaningful way, that we use that first 100 days for buzz building and movement building, and then we look at a, a mass mobilization on April 29th and then uh, think at that point about um, what makes the most sense strategically post April 29th. Um, and so at, um, I think that the only other piece that I'll say before handing over to, to Joelle is that um, there is uh, the, the date of April 29th has been chosen. It's right towards the end of the first 100 days of the new administration. Um, the thinking currently is that um, we want to look at mobilizing um, large numbers of people uh, to be coming to Washington, D.C. There's also very active um, consideration and planning and discussion going on about looking at some um, hubs for mobilization in, in several other parts of the country also so that we really send the message that there is a broad distributed movement that, that's committed around this. Um, I'm going to say something in a little bit about the first 100 hours, um, but we, we want uh, to turn things over now to, to Joelle, and she'll talk about the organizing that, that she's going to be helping coordinate in, uh, in the greater D.C. area around making what happens there as, as powerful as possible in terms of faith community participation. So Joel, Joelle, why don't I turn it over to you? Sure. Um yeah, so as you heard before, um, uh, I direct the Interface Power and Light that's working with congregations on climate work in this region that is going to be hosting the People's Climate Mobilization. Um, and um, most of what I'm about to say is really just uh, about establishing um, Fletcher and me, uh, Greenface and IPLDMV, as kind of points of contact and coordination hubs for um, for the things we want to do together and the kinds of collaboration we'll want to have as the date gets closer. Um, most of the ideas, uh, most of the things we'll want to do together have not been established yet, but, but, but we're just trying to start the conversation by, um, by saying that, that we're happy to be the place where you um, find your way to the other folks who want to uh, connect with and work with on these things. So, um, so if you're, on the line from a congregation in in our region, um, in the D.C. area and the uh, Northern Virginia and the state of Maryland. Um, uh, we're really excited to think about using the excitement around this mobilization to, um, to build our regional climate movement and to think about some of the state and local um, uh, climate policy campaigns that will be underway um, in the lead up to this mobilization and, and talking about that, those opportunities together. So in the DC area, we're trying to put a, uh, in the DC proper, uh, we're trying to put a price on carbon and actually um, uh, pass a carbon pricing uh, bill in the city council. Um, in Maryland, we want to strengthen Maryland's clean energy law this legislative session. Uh, we have to override the governor's veto of that bill we passed last year in order to do that. And we also want to put a permanent statewide ban on fracking um, in the state of Maryland. So um, I'm very excited to hear from any congregations on the line who are in the region to think about how do we build our power on these critical climate opportunities locally as we're 
um, getting excited and ramping up and, and um, being aware of the ways that we are uh, um, a, a part of and the local um, hosts for the mobilization coming our way April 29th. Um, uh, and in, a, in addition, I anticipate that there are going to be ways that uh, our local faith communities can help. Um, um, for example, uh, host uh, overnight visitors from town who are looking for a place to stay um, uh, and otherwise coordinate. Um, and, you know, we're not in that position right now to say, here's the form and here's the spreadsheet and here's the system that you're going to use to coordinate that. But I am going to just say we're prepared to serve as a um, coordination hub for congregations wanting locally who are wanting to support and help with the mobilization as well as congregations and faith communities from out of town that are wanting to uh, need some kind of local assistance. Um, so that invitation is now issued and, and feel free to be in touch with us if you have ideas or ways that you want to assist. Um, I want to name and acknowledge that this mobilization is on a Saturday and therefore uh, during um, Shabbat for our Jewish communities um, and just say that we're um, pretty committed and very well prepared in terms of our networks and relationships in the district to um, facilitate hospitality and to ensure that anyone whose um, Shabbat practice requires it um, can, you know, stay within walking distance of the event um, and, and otherwise has their um, Shabbat practice accommodated in participating. So, um, uh, and I myself am part of the DC area Jewish community um, and, 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 and uh, really value um, the importance of making sure that that, that, that is possible. Um, and I've had a lot of very good experiences um, helping to set up what I like to call Jew tingents in um, larger uh, faith based uh, activities. So, um, so feel free to be in touch with IPL DMV um, with any of those considerations or needs. And then finally, um, and this is again something that uh, Fletcher and I are only just opening um, here and want to continue discussing, but, but we're just trying to create the space through this call um, to do so about what kind of uh, face specific programming we might want to have um, around this mobilization? Do we want to have a multi-faith prayer service um, immediately prior to the mobilization itself, the night before? Um, is there some way we want to, presumably we will try to march together, um, but are there other are there other ways we can have a distinctive voice in the program or around the program? Um, again, uh, we're not coming here to tell you what the plan is. We're just saying that um, we're excited to, to plan with you and to think about um, what what we want our communities, how we want our communities to be um, to to have a distinctive and visible voice um, in this event. And as you have um, uh, ideas for some of those um, concurrent events or um, or visible ways of being visible inside the mobilization, um, please uh, reach out to uh, to me, IPL DMV, to, as we, to just be in touch about um, at things that might move forward. I see a question. Yep, the, <clears throat> the question was whether this, uh, this mobilization mm -hmm. had any direct link with Green Faith certified congregations. And I think the answer is going to be the same, <clears throat> I would imagine, for any congregations that have worked with Green Faith or with IPL. We absolutely are going to be looping you in on this. We, we need everybody for this. We need, and I think it's really important to, to, to note that numbers are going to matter. Where Whatever we do, numbers are going to matter. The, the president-elect is has demonstrated that he's very capable at, at bringing out large crowds. And if we want to be taken seriously, we're going to need to mobilize at scale for this. So we, we're going to need every single, you know, if there's a faith community out there and they've only heard in a dream about IPL or Green Faith, they're going to be hearing from us because we need everybody. And, you know, the, 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 the general 
organizing principle that Fletcher and I have established so far is that um, for things that are in the immediate region, IPL DMV will take the lead, and for um, congregations or faith communities beyond the immediate region, Green Faith will take the lead. Uh, Green Faith certified congregations in our region, you know, raise a little bit of a, a question about, but you know, either uh, you are very welcome to kind of reach out to either of us about um, about getting your congregation engaged, and and obviously both of our organizations would would love to be working with you. Great. <clears throat> Awesome. Thanks, Amelia and Joelle. And thanks for, uh, we know from our experience in in, uh, in New York that it's not a small thing to, to um, sort of saddle up to the bar, if you will, with the kinds of offers that then commitments that you guys have made and that it, and this kind of stuff doesn't happen without really strong local, local leadership. So we're, we're really thrilled at the chance to, to work together. And thanks for your thoughtfulness also around, around making the the mobilization as as friendly to our Jewish partners as possible. We we ran into a, a similar challenge in New York because the march in New York was on a Sunday, which which made mobilizing from a certain number of churches difficult. And by working together and building goodwill, and we we found ways to to make it work pretty well. And I'm really confident that following your leadership, that'll be the same in in DC. Um, I'll say a few things about the the national organizing um, and then Leslie will bring you back in just to give any insights from the from the planning process from other sectors um, so I mentioned uh, several minutes ago that uh, we don't want to we're, we're going to be planning for a significant action on the 29th of April at the same time we think it's really important that the uh, the multi-sector climate movement and faith communities within that um, show up on this issue visibly and publicly before then. And so um, we'll be uh, taking the lead to invite uh, faith communities, multi-faith groups around the country to have a, uh, a multi-faith, and if they would be open to it, multi-sector vigil of some kind during the first 100 hours of the new administration. The new administration starts, the 100-hour the, the clock starts ticking at noon on Friday the 21st of January and a hundred hours goes I think until sometime into um, into Monday or Tuesday but the important thing I think for faith groups is that it, it, it goes over the weekend and we would love to see a um, hundred multi-faith vigils uh, in different places around the country where people of faith whether in a um, you know more um, significant and, and high visibility way, or even if it's just taking place at a local congregation where people of different faith are coming together to pledge that that as dip people of different faiths, we, we join together around this movement. We care about it. Um, we believe that people of all faiths are an important part of the extended family of, of uh, the blessed community that, that is makes up the human family. Um, we particularly want to find opportunities to lift up our Muslim brothers and sisters who, sadly, along with immigrants and women and uh, gays and lesbians and others, have been targeted by rhetoric that we all find to be offensive and immoral by the incoming administration. Um, we want to find ways to stand together, and we uh, are going to be sharing information soon um, so that groups that are interested in doing a, a vigil during that first 100 hours can, uh, can, can find out what kind of support we can provide. We want to be really clear. We got one email from uh, a person after the, after the call we had on Monday saying, does it have to be a 100-hour vigil? And the answer is definitely no. An hour is fine. Um, um, you can go for 100 if you're up for it, but it doesn't need to be 100 hours long just to take place during that first 100 hours because we want to be able to highlight to the media that there's really substantial um, support around that. And we'll be offering a, a range of uh, we'll be offering a range of sample prayers and um, resource materials, social media materials, sample press releases, things like that, so that you can reach out to to local media and 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 make the most of it. Um, I think a, a, so that that's the the first hundred hours shifting back towards the the larger scope of the the hundred days of organizing towards the twenty ninth. Uh, Joelle and I'll be helping coordinate 
uh, a number of, of, different, uh, of different calls. Um, some of the calls will be specifically for folks in the greater DC area, which Joel will, will coordinate. Some of them will be for um, folks from uh, beyond the greater DC area, and, and I'll coordinate those along with other multi-faith colleagues, um, Patrick Carolyn from the Franciscan Action Network, Imam Safa Tadavik from the, the Muslim community, um, others from the Hindu and Jewish and Buddhist communities. So we'll 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 have uh, and and then when it makes sense, we'll we'll bring the DC and national calls together so that folks can feed off of each other's energy and we can manage important things that are uh, that are important to both audiences on on those calls. Um, there is a uh, website, peoplesclimate.org, and I'll I'll list. We'll have the URL on a slide later on. And as we did for the March in New York, there will be a, a good, strong faith section to that website where there'll be a whole range of flyers and prayers and access to, to artwork that folks can use and a whole lot of different uh, materials that faith groups can use alongside the materials that are provided for everybody taking part in the March, information about the route, um, updates, opportunities for organizations to sign on and to endorse the march. And that, that's something that's already available at peoplesclimate.org. If your organization would like to, to sign up to endorse the march, please, you know, please go there and do that right away because that's an important part of building, uh, building momentum. Um, one of the things that, that Green Faith will be doing is trying to, uh, is trying to connect uh, faith groups beyond DC with the various PCM tables, it says circles here, but I should say PCM tables that are uh, going to be coming into, that are going to be coming online in a number of different places around the country. We got a question earlier about what, uh, what tables means in this context, and I think, as Leslie said, think of it as local organizing committees, uh, multi-sector groups coming together in, in, different, uh, in different places. One of the things that in the organizing of the March in New York we found was really critical was to, to sort of make sure that we set up the structure so that many, many different faith communities, different Christian denominations, different, different faiths, all had their own hubs going on. And so I, I mentioned earlier, Patrick Carolyn and the Franciscan Action Network have stepped up to offer to play a coordinating role for, for Catholic communities around the U.S. that, that want to be involved. Um, Imam Safa Katavik has stepped forward to, to help with um, mobilizing and coordinating and organizing Muslim groups that, that want to be involved. Um, and I know that we'll have uh, many, many others that will uh, be involved. We've heard uh, Rabbi Arthur Waskow from the Shalom Center in Philadelphia, um, Kristen Barker with One Earth Sangha, um, a, a excellent Buddhist uh, network. So we've got lots of folks who are going to uh, step forward. And if you'd like to be involved, we also, um, for the, uh, the March in New York, we had something like 30 different denominational groups. So we had an Episcopal group, a Lutheran group, a Methodist group, and, and so on and so on. One of, the, one of the best moments of the march was we got an irritated phone call from an atheist group that was upset with us because we didn't have an atheist hub as part of the faith organizing table. Who would have known? So we, we got an atheist hub and got a sign form and the atheists marched with us and it was really great. So um, if you're interested in being involved in that kind of way, send me an email and um, and we'll be sure that we uh, will be sure that we um, that we get you looped in. Um, got a, a question that came in from uh, Betsy Leonard, Green Faith Fellow, out in in Colorado about how how do folks out who aren't going to be able to make it to D.C. get involved? And and that's um, planning is is in process on that. I think that it's it's very possible that there will be um, a certain number of cities that are really out of easy traveling distance from DC where there are going to be some solidarity actions. And I know that Denver has, uh, has possibly been, uh, has been mentioned as one, one possible city along with Phoenix and Las Vegas and uh, a number of others. So we'll be in touch around that in terms of if there are bigger mobilizations that are getting planned for different cities. 
But at the same point in time, there are going to be ways that we're going to make it possible for people to come together wherever they are. Um, and so if folks are in a rural area, um, you know, several hours away from a big city or an, an unattainable distance away from a, one of the bigger mobilizations, we're absolutely going to make it possible for folks to have solidarity actions in their own communities. And we understand that, that different parts of the country have different population makeups. And what we've always found to work best is be as, as diverse as you can. Really use this as an opportunity to, to reach out to ethnic and cultural and religious and um, other communities that you're not normally in touch with. Really, really make a push on that. And we'll also, as, uh, as the um, time gets, uh, as the time gets closer, um, we will, uh, uh, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be sure that we, we communicate every, any information that we've got about, uh, about transportation options for folks who want to get to DC or, or wherever. Um, Leslie, I might, uh, if, if you'd be game, I might sort of turn back to you and see if, if you'd say a little bit, I mean, uh, the, about, um, you know, the, the Trump election has uh, caught many people by surprise in a very unpleasant way. And maybe if you could say a little bit about the, the you know, the People's Climate Movement is aware of that, has been listening really, really carefully to what kind of feedback has been emerging. Maybe you could share a little bit, Leslie, about, about that, about how PCM is engaging with that. Sure. Um, <laughs> obviously, that's a, uh, a really, really big topic. Um, and I think, you know, as Fletcher just said, uh, you know, a lot of the country, not only people working on climate, but people from many constituencies and working in many social um, justice, economic justice, et cetera, struggles, were really thrown. And just people, you know, were really thrown, not just by the election, but then, you know, almost every day there's some new announcement about some terrible thing, some terrible person that, um, that he's uh, thinking about or appointing or nominating or whatever. And the, the hints at his so-called policy uh, perspectives are also just horrifying. Uh, and to that, of course, uh, the, the makeup, the character of the Congress at this point, uh, we are in for some rough times. And by we, and I don't only really mean the, I mean, people uh, were in for some pretty committee people in about and trying to understand uh, what kind of impact this has on our work. Uh, one way it has an impact is that things that we thought were secure or in place may not be in place. So we may have to be defending more things than we than we otherwise would have. For instance, the EPA. <laughs> we may have to end up defending the EPA. Um, or the commitment um, from this country to the Paris uh, Agreement, the Paris Climate Agreement, even with its weaknesses, um, our perspective is that it's much better to have that agreement than to not have it. So um, in addition to putting out our uh, proactive agenda, that is what we would like to see, um, you know, in terms of new initiatives, new policies, new actions by our federal leadership. Um, and we want to keep putting that out, um, but we have to be realistic that we may be having to be more defensive and protective of some of the gains, some of the steps forward from the last decade or two decades, um, at, you know, as we move into this new period. We also, there's been a lot of feedback, a lot of um, concern, and I think understandable concern, that people want to focus uh, perhaps a little bit more than they had thought about before, about trying to secure victories at the local level and the statewide level, that this may be the arena locally, statewide, that may be the arena where we could hold on to some victories and actually advance uh, a good agenda when it comes to climate. Obviously, that's going to vary from area to area and state to state, um, but um, it, it makes people think a little bit more about the balance between the national effort and the local efforts. Um, and again, I think we, we still rest in a commitment 
to moving the organizing and the mobilizing ahead on both levels, locally and nationally. That one, um, one is only as strong as what's happening with the other, um, which gets back to that question, too, about people uh, and groups that are not close to Washington. Remember also that there's uh, not only what Fletcher said about thinking about the end of April, but in the run-up to then, uh, uh, particularly that first 100 hours, we very much see that as an opportunity for decentralized activities all across the country. Um, so we hope that can be a very, very strong marker uh, in this campaign as, as we're building toward the end of April. So hopefully that speaks to some of what uh, you had in mind, Fletcher. Yeah, that, that's great. And Joelle, I know you've done a lot of thinking about this too, about the importance of local um, local action at this point. Is that, And you, you mentioned some of the really good work you guys are doing. Anything else you'd want to add about, about this? Um, just that with every action we try to ask, you know, what's the goal of the action itself and then how does this build the movement that we want going forward? And and I'm excited to to be sort of thinking about both. It's been um, inspiring to see the way the people's climate movement in September of 2014 has, you know, led to, um, has, has energized and you know, energized the work since then. And so I, I think, um, yeah, I think the more that we can think about this mobilization this March as a, as a, about strengthening our work together for all kinds of things going forward and a much long, longer journey, um, the better. Yep. And, you know, obviously um, we're, you know, we're all sort of living through this in real time and, are going to be doing the absolute best we can to adapt as we as we move forward. Um, one question that that came in a couple of minutes ago that I wanted to get to was saying that uh, whoops, I'm gonna push the wrong button there. Hang on a sec. We'll be right back. Um, is uh, is finding uh, a, a question about was the uh, um, what other organizations are involved in in the um, in the march because folks are only just beginning to, to hear about this and I'm, I'm pulling up this slide because if you look at the there's an incomplete list of groups on the uh, far right hand column that are involved there are are more groups than this and that list is growing and you'll be hearing each of the the different um, sort of groups is is announcing their participation and their engagement in this in, in their own way. And so different groups will be um, sort of calling out about it at, at different points in time over the coming several weeks. Um, I think that, you know, one of the things that we're really excited about is with the faith, the faith sector is really kind of unique because we're, we're both big and decentralized and really, I was going to say hydra headed, that's not really the best kind of metaphor, but at any rate, I think everybody gets what I mean. And so it's, it's, you know, we're really excited to move in coalition and want to sort of, again, mention while our, our technology didn't allow for um, getting other faith folks in, um, Patrick Carolyn and the Franciscan Action Network have been involved in the People's Climate Movement um, Steering Committee for some time now and planning around that. Um, and uh, we know that there was really good work done in terms of the march that happened at the Democratic National Convention in Philadelphia that the Shalom Center and others in the greater Philadelphia area played a, a really important role in, in making happen. So there's, there, there are lots of um, centers of action and activism within faith communities that, that, that are going to make this, this work successful. So we're excited about that. Um, we're, we're starting to, to move into the um, sort of last several minutes of the, of the webinar. So if you've got uh, questions, now's a good time to, to share them. Um, I think in terms of, of next steps, this, this coming Thursday and Friday, there's a, a meeting of the People's Climate Movement Steering Committee to do some, some further thinking about uh, what modifications, how, how our plans need to evolve to meet the, the new context that we're facing, and we'll be in touch about that um, regularly. Um, we're we're going to get started, uh, both Joelle and I are going to get started with our our regular calls, um, some with just DC area folks, some with just beyond DC area folks, some with a little bit of everybody. Um, we're gonna start actively trying to connect
faith communities with PCM tables as they start to emerge um, around the country. We're going to build build out the the faith section of the PCM website, and we'll be in touch very very soon around the first hundred hours planning. We've got uh, already the um, coming out of the Beloved Earth community at Riverside Church in in New York. Um, planning is underway for a multi faith vigil in New York. Um, and they're uh, they're looking at uh, they're they're looking at at sort of where and, and how to do that. Um, just got a, a question in about would pagan groups be welcome? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. We had a a pagan community that was part of the multi faith um, network at the march in New York, and it was absolutely great. They were awesome. Um, We've not, I mean, this is the, in terms of has there been outreach, this, this is the first sort of public outreach that's going on. So again, if you're interested in helping mobilize in any faith community, any spiritual community, let us know. We'll probably put together a, an agnostics uh, table again. We had an agnostics group, and like I said, we had the atheist group. So um, we're, we're, we're game, and we're looking forward to working with a really wide and diverse range of, of, uh, of, uh, of faith communities. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, uh, we're, we're, it's, it's time to, I mean, we know it's the holiday season and that everybody's crazily busy, but we're, we're going to keep on moving forward with this and we'll be, we'll be using email to, to communicate with folks. Um, we'll be sending out updates when we've got meaningful new additions to the peoplesclimate.org website to the faith section of that. Um, and we really are, are very eager to, um, to work with you. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring up the next slide for, for contact information. So my, um, for the Beyond DC sort of national contact, please, please feel free to be in touch with me. Um, Joelle, uh, do you want to say a um, few words? We've got Karen's uh, name here, and I, I've, I've been pronouncing her name Karen Liu, but I want to make sure that's, that's correct. And anything you want to say about reaching out to Karen? No, just that, um, you know, where uh, I saw the question about coordinating housing for people who might uh, want home hospitality when they come to town for the march. That's, that is all the kind of thing where we're happy to be a, a local point of coordination for. So um, Karen on my team will be the point on our PCM work. Um, and, you know, as you have ideas of things you want to offer, your congregation wants to offer, or from out of town, things that you need uh, locally and that your congregation will need to participate, um, as well as um, as everyone has ideas about what we want our visible faith presence uh, in the mobilization to look like, all of those things are things we're happy to hear from you about, and um, and we'll try to maintain good communication um, going forward. Great. A um, couple of questions. This is good. We're getting some last minute questions in. One question, is there a website for the first 100 hours vigil? Um, someone wanting to get their Unitarian Universalist congregation on board. It, it, uh, we're building out a couple of web pages literally as we speak. So um, today's Wednesday. Our, our goal is to have that, um, have a couple of pages ready uh, by the end of the day tomorrow that we can go public with. And as soon as we do, we'll get, we'll get an email out to everybody who's registered on this and, and we'll also be sending a, a wider email out on that. So we'll, um, it's a work in progress, but it, it's, but it's coming soon. Um, uh, and this is great. Steve, Steve Knight, uh, who's, uh, been doing a great job helping with the local New York organizing had, uh, sent his email in the Q and a section, which I think everybody can look at. So if you want, uh, to reach out to Steve, it, it's, uh, um, his email is in the, the Q&A section of the webinar, and we'll also start connecting folks up uh, in the follow-up email that we send out to make sure that people have a way of, of uh, connecting up around that. And don't be shy. If you want to uh, try to do some organizing and you don't hear anybody else in, in your area, go for it. Um, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll be glad to reach out to, um, to our Green Faith Networks in whatever area you're in and and get folks connected up. So don't don't be shy if you if you want to try to get something started in your area. Um, and a reminder that I'm only I'm the director of the IPL that serves the DC metro area and the state of Maryland, but there are IPL affiliates in nearly 40 states. Um, and so if anyone's on the call who doesn't know if there's an IPL near you, and might that might be a, a helpful uh, local resource for thinking about 100 hours actions. Um, and I'm happy to make 
introductions if you um, if Googling fails you. Great. A um, couple of other questions. Next, uh, one question about is it possible to share um, the impacts, the information about the impacts of climate change in local areas? Um, we'll do our best with that because we know that does help in terms of communicating. The IPL network, as Joel meant, uh, Joelle mentioned, is a, a good resource in terms of folks who are able to articulate that. The, um, and there are some others, and we'll make sure that there are some links and some communication tips on the uh, on the faith section of the website website in terms of effective ways to to communicate about this. And then a a, um, a good suggestion from our friend Janine Walsh at the Franciscan Action Network about making sure that we can accept photos um, from the hundred hour vigils, and that's absolutely uh, that's absolutely part of the plan because we want to be able to get a a good um, a good uh, rich visual um, component to this. And, um, you know, I think for those of you who are, who were at the, um, who were at the March in New York, you saw what an important role, uh, the arts played. And we've got the, uh, many of the same folks from the arts community who are stepping forward to make this, this action, um, both in DC and distributed as visually, um, striking and meaningful as it possibly can be. So stay tuned to learn more about that. Leslie, any, any, uh, Leslie or Joelle, any, any final uh, thoughts or things you'd like to say? Uh, no, well, actually, just one thing. Again, I just want to thank everybody for taking out the time to, to jump in on this call. Uh, and I hope that means that you're going to be jumping in on a lot of calls and a lot of work. Uh, we all know we already had a lot of work before the election. Uh, and now we have all of that plus a whole lot more. Uh, and it's only really going to happen if we all do what we can do both you know, individually, but our own groups, our own communities, constituencies, congregations, um, you know, whatever we uh, all can contribute. Uh, and then we weave that together into a national movement. So it's just a, a little, you know, uh, signing off pep talk to everybody to, to hang in there. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that we will uh, be able to, to have a very successful spring winter and spring of organizing and action uh, and in so doing lay the foundation for what we know is going to have to come next so again just that's just a great big thank you to everyone great joelle any any closing pieces on your end just that the only answer to what we face is to get together so thank you for thank you for being part of that that beautiful climate movement that's going to get together on this Great. And I, I uh, wanted to make sure again mentioned uh, that you see Patrick Carolyn's email address for folks in the Catholic community who want to get involved. Um, reach out to Patrick and Fan and, and uh, they'll, they'll, they did a great job organizing the Catholic community in New York and are eager to, to jump in on that front uh, in DC also. So many thanks everybody. We'll be in touch with the, um, with the recording link with um, some further information about the people's climate movement and with information about next steps and about the hundred hours stuff. So thanks very much. Good to, good to be with you. And we're, we're looking forward to, uh, we're look, looking forward to getting to work together. So take, take care everybody and we'll be in touch again soon. Bye-bye now.